cruise on the Nile in the wake of the ancient Egyptians, an adventure into the world of the pharaohs and the exploration of their mammoth culture. We start our journey in Luxor, a place of ancient history. The word Luxor stems from the Arabic and means palaces. In earlier times, Luxor's massive temple complexes formed part of Egypt's capital of Thebes. A three-kilometer avenue of sphinxes leads from Luxor to Karnak, erected during the reigns of Ramesses II and Amenophis III. This impressive avenue was dedicated to three gods of Thebes. The facade of the 260-meter-long temple is decorated with six huge statues of Ramesses. The open yard symbolizes the human torso and the 32 pillars, the lungs. The history of Egypt has been divided into three realms. The old realm was the time of the Great Pyramids. The middle and the new realm are known as the Golden Epoch. The word obelisk comes from the Greek language and means tiny spear. Their shining crest served as a resting place for the rising sun. Boundless wealth was transformed into gigantic buildings and abundant sphinxes. At night, the temple complex has an air of mystique, and light casts ghostly shadows all around. Fearsome monuments gaze into infinity. Muslim influence abounds, and today there is a mosque within the temple. This minaret is decorated with tiny, colorful lamps. In the dark of night, the temple complex is like a huge stage. In the ghostly light, the impressive wall paintings look surreal. Many of them depict the daily life of ancient Egypt. A strange world full of mystery and miracles, but long since gone. Sculpted into the sandstone and captured for eternity. It doesn't take much to imagine life in the holy city. Perhaps a priest of ancient Egypt will suddenly appear from around the corner. Karnak. It took almost 2,000 years to build this huge temple complex, the largest in Egypt. This gigantic place is one of the most important sacred buildings in the world. Its enormous dimensions are difficult to comprehend. The complex can be approached from two directions, from the Nile and from Luxor. The great columned hall alone extends for 5,000 square meters. Forming an avenue to the temple, 40 ram-headed sphinxes symbolize the power of a moon.
Since the earliest known hieroglyphs, Karnak has produced much fascinating historical information. In the ancient Egyptian religion, belief in the afterlife played a highly significant role. On each side of the central corridor, there is a forest of 134 pillars that contain papyrus capitals. The heart of the complex is the gigantic Amun temple. Even today, its two obelisks rise far into the sky. The eastern obelisk is 23 meters high and weighs 143 tons. The second lies on its side at the sacred lake. Beams of light shine through cracks in the ancient stones. Some sections of the complex are more than 4,000 years old. They consist of Aswan granite, limestone and sandstone. Through subterranean pipes, the sacred lake was supplied with water from the Nile. The mystic water was used for ritual bathing and for boats and sacred geese. The path leads downward, a bygone age that suddenly comes to life. Discoveries are not only to be found on terra firma, Illustrated images are known as hieroglyphs, most notably those of ancient Egypt. They are the oldest in the world. From a distance, the city looks as though it is still inhabited. The imaginative explorer walks in the footsteps of the pharaohs. At its zenith, a million people inhabited Thebes. The necropolis covers 25 square kilometers. The graves of 64 kings, queens, and those in high office have been discovered here. With the exception of Amenophis, each of the pharaohs of the new realm were buried here, as well as the legendary Tutankhamun. The fine detail of the figures and ornaments is truly remarkable. Like a history book, the life and victories of each of the pharaohs is lavishly illustrated on colourful large wainscotings of stone. Furniture, clothing and weapons accompanied the dead. The surviving relatives provided them with bread and fish. Miniature figures were provided as servants in the afterlife. The worship of the gods possessed many faces, such as humans in animal form and gods with a human body. To safeguard them from grave robbers, the Egyptian monarchs had their tombs built in a remote valley. images appear, such as that of this Egyptian beetle and those of the sun god Ra.
It's fascinating to travel through ancient Egypt on a journey into the past. In comparison with the mighty gods, the human frame is diminutive. This wall tells the story of a glorious victory. It's the legend of a royal warrior who killed the demonic bulls that were attacking his chariot. Fine sand and scorching heat are constant companions in the Valley of the Queens, a valley that contains around 70 graves. The grave of Nefertari, wife of Ramesses, is on public view. The grave chamber has been restored and can be entered. As well as queens, princes are also buried here. This is a famous painting of grapes. The scant mountainous terrain is surrounded by searing heat. Six thousand six hundred and seventy one kilometers long, the Nile is the longest river in Africa. In Egypt, even some of the bridges are covered with illustrations of the ancient kingdom. The river oasis of the Nile winds like a green ribbon through the yellow desert landscape. Sugarcane plantations become cotton fields and then fields of corn and millet. A leisurely coat journey leads from the harbour to Edfu, the next stop on our Nile journey. Edfu, with its tower, outer walls, buildings and halls, is still in almost perfect condition. And royal falcons carved from granite stand guard at the entrance. The walls are an authentic history book of Egyptian myth and legend. The Egyptian gods are everywhere, as impressive statues, fragile carvings and paintings. Many are depicted with animal heads. The goddess of love, Hathor, has the horns and ears of a cow. The god of the sky, Horus, has the head of a falcon. No other culture has so many gods in animal form. Sections of hieroglyphs interchange with fascinating paintings. The illustrations tell of battles lost and won and highlight the significance of this once flourishing city. Great events are also depicted. This is of an imaginary battle of the victory of Horus against Seth and also the martial visit of Hathor. A dry desert climate is typical of the weather in most of Egypt. The coolest time is between October and April. Then the temperature is between 20 and 35 degrees Celsius. During this leisurely journey on the Nile, 
the land slowly passes by and the cool drink works wonders. Passing ancient monuments, the boat cruises slowly into the evening. Everything glows golden in the early evening sun. And now the cruise has become a dream adventure. Komombo is a temple complex for two deities, Horus the falcon and Sobek the crocodile. The mummified holy crocodiles are stored in a special chamber. Indeed, cemeteries have been discovered that contain thousands of mummified dogs, cats, baboons and crocodiles. While walking from chamber to chamber, it's like walking back in time for thousands of years. The dead were buried in rock tombs up to 300 meters long. But the gods of ancient Egypt did not only perform miracles, just as with humans, they sometimes became enslaved by passion. Stories on the walls reveal their eventful lives. In the evening, the external wall looks even more dramatic than during the day. Seemingly never-ending pictures of stone document numerous episodes in the life of ancient Egypt. We continue up the Nile, passing landscapes that are reminiscent of the time of the pharaohs with fields worked by yoked oxen and donkey cars. Excursion ships of every kind, from the luxury steamer to the traditional falaka, make their way on the Nile. This mode of transport is as important to trade as it is to tourism. continuously meet other cruise ships navigating in their hundreds on this section of the Nile that is full of ancient landmarks. This incredible waterway leads deeper into the south and now we have reached our final destination. Many ships have already anchored here. In Aswan, Egypt's southernmost city, there is a marvellous market. From yellow saffron to green pepper, everything is piled high in the shape of a pyramid. A blend of red hibiscus blossom is often chosen as a souvenir. The city contains many miracles from the 1001 nights. Aswan is known as the beauty of the Nile. Its mysterious charm inspired Agatha Christie to write her thrilling detective novel, Death on the Nile. The 
boats travel serenely on the water. There's a silent breeze. The atmospheric landscape is like something from another time. With the arrival of the dam, the Nile was tamed for the first time in its history. A life-giving water supply for both man and animal. Following the wishes of her husband, the Aga Khan, the Begum ordered that his mausoleum be built here. On a tiny romantic felucca, a traditional boat, the wind takes us further up the Nile. The chaotic rush of Cairo seems a million miles away. Suddenly, rocks appear. Small, dreamy bays occasionally line the riverbanks. Designed in colonial style, the old and luxurious Cataract Hotel has the most beautiful views across the ruins of Elephantine. This one also contains modern hotel complexes. High terraces provide a splendid view over the marvellous picture book landscape. The journey on the tiny boat leads to the excavation site of Philae on the island of Agilica. This island, with its fantastic temple complexes, was once the Pearl of Egypt. This is where the numerous pillars of Hathor are located. The symbol of the goddess Hathor has a round torso, crowned on four sides with the head of the goddess that has the ears of a cow. The pilgrims of ancient Egypt came from far and wide to summon the healing powers of the goddess Isis. The monolith of stone within the temple hall was what they came to see. Innumerable patterns cover the reliefs of the stone tiles within the temple. As a further embellishment, several shrines and gates have been added. Symbols of life and the afterlife are frequently found on the temple's walls, wainscotings and pillars. This witness of time cast in stone seems indestructible. The Temple of Hathor, the cow deity, is also known as the golden goddess of womanhood, sky and trees. Many came to worship here as it was believed that this goddess possessed the power of healing. Most of the temples face to the east, so that both the rising and setting sun can shine deep inside their interior. The stone witnesses on the river banks stand silently as the boat continues on its journey further into Egypt. An impressive country that has an amazing ancient history and a modern awareness of its glorious past.